Hello. Okay, so somebody tell me when my screen is actually working. Anybody? It is working. Is it working? It yes. is. Okay. Of course, you know, once the meeting starts, it won't work for you. No. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. Page up, page down. Okay, I have to use the mouse. Okay. Good evening. Hey, Robin. Hey, Robin. Hey, Robin. Good night. I'm doing okay. Good. It all of a sudden became 5.30. I'm uh, looking forward to talking to our public. Here we go. Yep. Robin, are you presenting during uh, Stu's presentation or am I having you speak after Stu? You know, I'm not 100% sure because um, I've had other things going on during the JIC. Stu, that's up to Stu. I will Stu? do what he wishes. Yeah, I, th I think there's, we've tried to trim the presentation. So. Okay. Um, at, at any time, Robin would jump in and talk about mental health and well-being for our community. Would be great if it's a response okay. to a question or a time, Brian, that you think might be uh, good. Okay. Then go for it. Okay, okay. I'm ready. Whatever, we'll, we'll whatever it. works. We'll do it after Stu's presentation. Okay. Thanks yeah. very much. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. <clears throat> And after Stu's, I think uh, Bob Lawton has uh, the press release going out tonight on uh, camping, et cetera, in Mono County that he wanted to do at the front end of the meeting as well. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, he should be on shortly here. We just got off another call, so. Yeah, I think that would be helpful, folks. Thank you. Was that the Region 5 call, Region 6 call? Nope. No, different call. Okay. My screen, my screen's still up there, Brian? Yeah, it is. Good. Good evening, Mono County. Thank you again for joining us for the Mono County COVID Community Meeting for May 28th. My name is Brian Wheeler from Mono County Public Health and I'll be your host. I will once again be joined by members of Mono County, the town of Mammoth Lakes and Mammoth Hospital. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone of our COVID-19 portal which can be accessed at monohealth.com forward slash coronavirus. You can go to the site for the most up-to-date information and numbers. You can submit a question to our information team, and you can also check 
our FAQ question, uh, page where a lot of your answers questions can be answered. I would also remind the public of our 211 nurse line. If uh, you have feel like you have symptoms of COVID and are looking for some help and information, certainly give the number a call and select the option for to speak with a live nurse. So now I'm going to turn uh, the mic over to Stu, who's going to do a little presentation for us. Stu, go ahead. Thank you, Brian. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Stuart Brown, Parks and Recreation Director for the Town of Mammoth Lakes and the current lead Public Information Officer for the Unified Command Emergency Operations Centre. Uh, another busy week in Mono County. Um, so let's get straight to the updates. Um, you're welcome to follow the presentation online with us here this evening. We'll also post it to the chat room. If Lauren can uh, post that up, we can kind of have that available for you as well. And then again, live video, uh, sorry, the video will be available on the monohealth.com forward slash coronavirus portal. So let's get going. So conversation topics tonight, we're just gonna talk about the key messages that we'd like the Mona County residents to uh, be made aware of. We've got some weekly updates for you, uh, path forward, reopening Mona County and just some community updates. So again, we want to remind everybody that face covers are required in public throughout Mona County. You can see we've got a little graphic on the right there. So really what that means, if you're in public and you can't maintain your six foot distance, then it's recommended and it's actually required to wear a face cover. Again, as Brian mentioned, uh, we want to encourage you to call 211 if you're sick. Uh, get yourself to the nurse hotline uh, and you can get tested if you have symptoms. Uh, again, gatherings are only with people in your household unit. And again, you must maintain a six foot distance from others. Weekly metrics, uh, last seven days, we tested 76 people. We had uh, 75 negative and we had one positive. And again, you can see the case stats there um, through the inception uh, of our Mona County pandemic. Uh, and again, that information is available on the portal. You can see that each and every day in real time. Mona County metrics, uh, so far we've tested 606 people, 538 negative. We have uh, pending back because uh, we are testing throughout the county in the pop-up clinics. So you'll see the pending number back on the portal as well. Uh, 35 positives, uh, we have now two in the North County and then we have the 33 in the Mammoth Lakes, uh, Crowley Lake area. Again, want to invite you to, if you haven't already, visit the Mona County uh, reopening portal. Uh, you can see a very distinctive web graphic there. You can't miss it. So if you get to that homepage, uh, you can learn more about where we are on the California Resilience Roadmap and how we can progress further through the stages. You can see there we're in expanded stage two. Expanded stage two is the lower risk workplaces identified by the state. You can see stage three is the high risk workplaces and stage four is the end of the stay at home order. The information there that you want to get uh, if you're looking for further information is on that website right at the bottom there, covid19.ca.gov forward slash roadmap. Businesses permitted to open in stage two, and this is the slide we covered last week. It hasn't changed. Again, you can see retail, supply chains, childcare for essential workers, office based businesses, car wash, pet grooming, landscapes, and outdoor museums, galleries, and public spaces. Again, if you want to seek further information, I encourage you to get to our Path Forward website. You can look at all those businesses. On May 20, we moved to expanded stage two. And again, these are everything uh, in stage one and two. In addition to, we're able to now reopen our retail stores, our dining restaurants, but again, bars, gaming areas are not permitted in stage two. And again, schools with modifications. Again, all this information is on the Path Forward webpage. New business, uh, new business sector industry guidance from the state was released on May 26, uh, and that permitted uh, for our county, we can now reopen hair salons and barber shops with modifications. And statewide, you know, um, places of worship for religious services and in-person protests are now permitted again with guidelines. Uh, we do want to reiterate on the next slide here, we'll talk a, uh, talk a little bit more about it, but all businesses in Mona County are required to self-certify. And again, that's available through the monohealth.com coronavirus portal. Short-term lodging order, this was issued on May 20. 
Uh, again, it just rescinds the previous order in the unincorporated areas of Mono County, and it is now aligned with the governor's stay at home order. Again, we are under a non-essential travel prohibition. So lodging uh, is not permitted uh, throughout Mono County. In the town of Mammoth Lakes, it's the same, except we have a date of June 30. So again, uh, until Mono County and the state enters stage three, uh, we are prohibited from short-term rental. And again, that's gonna be reviewed every 15 days. Self-certification portal. This is in the businesses tab of the website. So any business eligible to reopen during stage two is required to self-report using the self-certification portal. So in that section, you'll be able to look at the business guidelines for your specific business sector and you self-certify your business. Uh, at the completion of that process, you'll receive a certificate that you can now prominently display at your place of business. Uh, and again, widespread adoption of these measures will only build customer confidence and promote Mono County as a safe place to live and visit. And again, all this information is available on that portal. Again, the Mono County Business Guidelines, the Frequently Asked Questions, very comprehensive, the self-certification portal are all on the Businesses tab. Um, wrapping it up here, want to make sure you're recreating responsibly throughout Mono County in our parks and our trails and across the Eastern Sierra. Uh, Mono County fishing season open on Saturday in your National Forest Visitor Centers campgrounds. Picnic areas and day use areas uh, still remain closed through June 30. Um, but the town has opened the Vulcan Brothers Skate Park. Sierra Star opened on Friday, Snow Creek Driving Range. All the public restrooms throughout Mono County in the town are open. Uh, if you're also looking for trails information, we encourage you to visit mammothtrails.org. And for closure information, we uh, recommend you visit essrp.org forward slash COVID-19 closures ESSRP for all the latest information there. And the final slide is just where you can go to get all the local information and resources. You can see we have a very comprehensive website, monohealth.com forward slash coronavirus. That's English and Spanish. If you're looking for um, questions and we can provide those answers, please email us at covid19help at mono.ca.gov. You can see they have a suite of social media platforms there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Call the Emergency Operations Center if you're a business looking for PPE, um, hand sanitizer, so forth, or any business guidance, you can call that number. And our daily brief is issued Monday through Saturday. Again, that is found on our web portal. So Brian, that's the update for today. It'll be posted uh, in the chat room and on our website um, after this presentation. So thank you. All right, thank you, Stu. Uh, I would now like to ask uh, Robin Roberts to speak to us uh, from Mono County Behavioral Health. Robin. Hey, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And first, I want to thank all my colleagues for the work they're doing to keep Mono County informed and safe. So I uh, just saw today some data from 6,000 um, workers who are currently either in the process of, of working of going back to work, um, 6,000 people over the last eight weeks. What we're seeing is an increase, a very steep increase actually, in anxiety about going back to work, um, sleep, like difficulties with sleep, um, also a, a huge rise in irritability. So I'm assuming, um, if you're like me and everybody else here on this panel, you're experiencing some one of those um, situations where you're feeling anxious, or maybe more irritable. I know certainly the, dis the decisions that are being made here are very difficult to be made, and the, the waiting that you're all feeling um, is hard to manage. So Mono County Behavioral Health is here for not just clients. We are here for clients for sure. We are here, we have services for you in English and Spanish. Most of them are no cost, um, but also really just really wanna talk about our community that we are here around our community wellness and wanting very much for you to feel like you have a place to reach out and talk about how you might be doing um, if, or that you, um, if you're not willing or wanting to talk to us, that's totally reasonable, but that you're talking to each other. The highest, the biggest way that we have to manage all of the stressors that we're seeing, and they're not going away, is connection. So I'm asking you, to make connection with somebody. 
either it's somebody that you know or somebody that's close by to you, um, certainly doing it with all the precautions that we have, but that you maintain on a daily basis connection. That is our biggest resilience. We are a strong community. We are a community that cares about each other. We are a community that cares about our workers and we need right now to really buckle down and do all the precautions that we have in order to make sure that people's anxiety isn't as high as it needs to be and that we really are taking care of each other. Call us if you need services, 760-924-1740. We'll walk you through all the things that we do, but mostly be kind to one another, follow the precautions, take care of each other. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Robin. I believe our CAO, Rob La Robert Lawton, would like to uh, address the, the, the community. Thank you, Brian. Um, appreciate the introduction. Uh, I'd like to um, probably share a little bit of news and maybe clarify some information um, that uh, came about as a result of Tuesday's um, uh, Board of Supervisors meeting on May 26th. Um, during that Tuesday meeting, um, I advised that uh, Mono County Administration was going to concur with Inyo County's interpretation regarding the um, impact of the governor's health order or the state health order on the operation of um, campgrounds and RV sites. Um, the governor's order did not specifically by name prohibit um, the use of campsites or RV parks. It does specifically prohibit the use of um, lodging, i.e. hotels, motels, cabins, um, uh, uh, Airbnbs for non-essential travelers. The governor's orders. The governor's orders also include a ban on non-essential travel itself within the state of California. Um, at the same time, we are we understand that there are people traveling in California. We have clear evidence of dispersed camping taking place. Um, on public land um, in particular, um, and that noting that there are significant public health hazards as well as fire hazards associated with dispersed camping um, taking place without any sort of supervision or infrastructure. Um, so you've got trash to dispose of, tanks that may or may not be pumped out properly. Um, that, that people are, are resorting to these measures because of the lack of availability of, um, of campsites and RV spaces on private property. Um, given the public health and safety concerns, given the latitude permitted um, under, the, uh, under the governor's order, um, Mono County will um, um, regard the uh, reopening with certain modifications of private uh, campsites and RV parks. Um, and I'll get into that in a moment. It doesn't affect um, federal lands like anything under the jurisdiction of Bureau of Land Management um, or the Forest Service or National Parks. They are federal government agencies. They are not subject to uh, rules, regulations, directives from the state of California or the county of Mono. They do have the ability to act on their own within whatever regulations and directives their federal agencies have established for opening facilities. Um, we've done our best to work collaboratively with, uh, with those campsites, but the, the county's enforcement provisions don't, uh, don't inhibit federal government uh, lands from being uh, opened up, nor do they 
somehow confer an ability to, to uh, upon them to open up that they didn't have before. Um, I think there are a couple of points I'd like to make generally about how the, um, the new uh, um, camping guidelines um, will work. Um, any business that's reopening, um, whether it's one of the ones you saw earlier on the slide or the, uh, the campsites, um, has to file or has to submit a reopening plan that meets the state and county requirements for all businesses. Um, the businesses, including campsites, can attest to their uh, meeting safety standards at the Mono County COVID-19 business portal. Um, because the governor's order um, prohibiting non-essential travel is still in effect, um, campground operators must refrain from advertising that they are open for business. That would promote violations of, uh, of the governor's order, the state order that is uh, still in effect. Um, and pending further guidance from the uh, state of California, um, which could be more restrictive or less restrictive, um, we're asking campgrounds to um, keep their uh, occupancy uh, below capacity. And I think there's a real possibility that there'll be more uh, directives from the state um, liberalizing some of these campground uh, regulations um, as, uh, as next week comes, uh, comes up. Um, so a couple of the larger, uh, the more important points, we have uh, um, uh, available um, directives about um, posting signage for guests about mitigation of uh, COVID-19 exposure, um, requiring, uh, you know, promoting physical distancing, um, face coverings, hand hygiene, and so forth. Group activities would be prohibited unless they are engaged in only by members of the same family unit or same household or living unit, what have you. Employees are required to practice frequent hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer, to wear face coverings when helping guests um, or interacting with the public or other employees. If public restrooms are available, they are to be sanitized and deep cleaned at least once per day. Um, basic cleaning is also to be conducted um, no less often than every two hours that the facilities are open. Uh, the use of group areas is prohibited, including but not limited to group camping sites, indoor meeting spaces, recreational facilities, uh, pools, or spas. Um, very important that the, the renting of cabins or other on-site structures is prohibited. What separates campsites and, uh, and RV uh, spaces from hotels or motels is that if you're camping or you have an RV, you're essentially bringing your room, your sleeping bag, your, your clothing. You're bringing that with you and then you're taking it away with you when you leave. You're taking the exposure with you when you leave. The use of hotel and motel rooms um, does expose uh, housekeeping staff and, and other guests to um, uh, potential, uh, potential viral contact um, in a way that is not present um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the camping and RV sector. Um, spreading out of camping and RV space is required. The space between any camping and RV spaces must provide a minimum of 20 feet of separation to allow adequate physical distancing as people circulate, they come and go, they sit outside of their tent or their RV. Um, um, where appropriate, hand sanitizer is to be provided for public use and um, uh, non-touch pay systems would certainly be recommended um, rather than having people um, hand uh, currency or, uh, or handle other people's uh, credit cards or debit cards. And then uh, finally, these facilities 
may be rented to um, any essential worker um, without, uh, without uh, regard to the uh, stay at home order. So we're, we're working on, um, on producing the documents for these, which will be posted on the county website. Um, they'll be affirmatively sent out to those uh, campsites and RV parks for which the county has uh, email or uh, postal information. Um, and uh, we hope that it represents a, a first step um, toward uh, understanding, uh, toward, uh, toward getting um, uh, our health and safety met needs met. Um, I would also note that we're going to be very interested and very concerned um, with the impact on our COVID um, uh, test results and the number of COVID reported cases um, following this weekend and certainly following uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, a hasty, poorly implemented um, return to travel and tourism might help us in the short run, but could in the long run slow our ability to move into phase three um, and could uh, result in uh, significant negative impacts on our medical system. So I would ask folks to, to adhere to these guidelines, to practice social distancing, um, and to, uh, to use disinfectants and sanitizers as they're available. Um, and, and recall that this measure, this camping measure, is being undertaken primarily because of the other damages that are caused by folks camping and hiking in close concentration in sites without infrastructure, without adequate services, <coughs> and where emergency, uh, emergency vehicles may not be able to reach people in time. So with that, I'm gonna thank you and I'll step off. Thank you, CAO Lawton. I see we have a full queue of questions already tonight, so let's go ahead and get started. Lauren, what's our first question? Bishop Hotels and Lodging are now opening for business. How is it that lodging is open in other areas near and around Mammoth, but Mammoth Lakes is not? We're all in the same stage per the gov governor of California, correct? Uh, all of these counties and more are open for nightly rental business. San Diego County, Los Angeles County, San Francisco, San Luis Obispo. Why are nightly rentals still closed in Mono County? Chief Fearbolt, can you field that question for us? I will do my best. So we've had no shortage of reports that come in about uh, places that are open other areas and then places that are open following uh, the state's guidance in other areas. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to chase those down to figure out, okay, how are they doing that? You know, is that an option open to us? I can tell you that fairly regularly, what we're finding is that what comes in as a you know, a statement of kind of fact or certainty. Um, I know we've had county council look at a lot of these. Um, when we get down into the details, it's it's usually a little bit different than what we initially hear. Um, we have picked up some good ideas from some other places. Um, it's helped us with some interpretation. Um, in terms of the other counties, I can't speak to if they're open, if they're open correctly, if they have some kind of a, uh, a process that uh, we don't. I know that we've taken advantage of every variance allowance issued by the state. Um, we actually started on it before they allowed it. Um, so the, the basis of, of Mono County and the Town of Mammoth Lake's current position on short-term rentals is based on the best available knowledge that uh, we have on stage three. Uh, I, th I think everybody is now in, in, are the, are in the same stage in terms of expanded stage two. Um, but for a while, that was not the case. We had some counties that were in, in expanded stage two and, and others had not uh, made, that, uh, made that move or, or that eligibility at the same time. So I know that's probably a frustrating answer, but it has been our experience that uh, what, we, what we hear sometimes uh, usually isn't completely accurate. 
sometimes it is, and when we found something that we could uh, use here as a good idea, I think we've done that. Thank you, Chief. Lauren, can we go to our next question? It is increasingly difficult to explain to travelers why Mammoth Lakes is still closed, especially given private campgrounds and RV parks that may open. Is it true that our pri camping, private camping and RV parks will open tomorrow, fr Friday, May 29th? Well, I think we already may have answered that, but Dan, do you want to address that? Hey, I think uh, uh, CAO Lawton walked through the campground question uh, as that is moving forward in a limited fashion. Uh, we are still closed from the nightly rental of uh, hotels and lodging based on both the uh, local health order that's in place as well as the uh, implementation of the state orders as uh, Chief Refault just uh, walked through. Thank you, Dan. Do we have our next question? Oh, Ryan, oh, before, we, before we go on to the next question, um, something I wanted to make sure to have, uh, to met, to have mentioned prior um, to the discussion on the, uh, on the camping and RV spaces, and that is there had been um, um, a request at the Tuesday meeting of the Board of Supervisors to have a special meeting on Friday um, to discuss further discuss camping and some other issues. That meeting um, has been postponed and the board will next meet to take up a variety of COVID issues along with its regular business on Tuesday. Um, but uh, county administration will move forward uh, later tonight and on Friday with releasing the um, information related to camping and RV, uh, resumption of camping and RV operations. Thank you. Thank you, G. Or thank you, CEO Lawton. Uh, I believe Dr. Burroughs would like to speak to us too. Go ahead, Doctor. Yeah, thanks, Brian. So, just in general, I would like people to appreciate that if we open the floodgates and open everything up, um, we are putting ourselves at a huge risk of seeing the surge that we are desperately trying to avoid. So, I think everyone needs to appreciate that and and respect this idea that once everything's open, that's gonna be it. We are not gonna have a chance to control this. Whatever Inyo County is doing or other counties across the state is doing, I think to some extent we have to take into account what's best for us. What can we handle? We are a geographically isolated area. And if we have a bunch of people that come to this area like they do all the time, really all year round now, and we get flooded with people that are sick, we are very quickly gonna get overwhelmed with our ability to take care of people. So if you ask yourself realistically, what are we most trying to avoid? It's just that, it's that surge that we can't handle. So by having a more gradual approach to opening things, it is our absolute hope and goal that we can control how quickly we see an increased number of cases if they're going to come. I would love to be wrong on this, but the experience around the rest of the country and what we're being told by other places that have opened is we are going to see more cases and we can handle a few cases here and there and continue with business as usual. We cannot afford to be flooded with more than we can handle. That is, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. And then everything that we'll have done will have all been for naught. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. I believe Chief Revolta would also like to speak. Chief? Um, I, Dr. Burroughs really uh, covered it well. We do have, uh, I, I will tell you that we do stay in touch, uh, Dr. Boo actually stays in touch regularly with CDPH and that uh, we, they, they know that especially this camping and RV issue is you know, putting tremendous pressure on uh, mountain communities like ours. And there's a bunch of unintended um, consequences. Uh, we, we, you know, we're starting to see some fires in the region. I, I don't know what the origins and causes are, but it just means that we're, 
uh, we're in conditions where we can start to have fire starts. We've got a, a red flag situation showing up in a couple of days. So the, uh, the, the camping and RV park push, even though it's a, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a gray area for us in terms of the stages, the unintended consequences of being in a tourism-based economy and being an area that people love to come to camp to and that we don't have any control over the roadways, you know, it's forcing us into a gray area that's not very well defined. And I think uh, uh, Dan Holler, you know, and, and, and Bob Lawton handled that well, that um, we just don't, you know, don't, uh, don't say all the, all the oxen free, we're all open. Because if we get exactly this onrush that Dr. Burroughs is talking about, um, it'll take us a couple of weeks to know what happened. And so whenever we make these changes, we're trying to give a little bit of um, response time in between the changes. And I know that seems slow and it's frustrating but it's also the only way that we can actually make sure that we protect the community so we can keep opening up and not have to go backwards. Thank you, Chief. Lauren, can we have our next question? What is Mono County doing to progress into stage three prior to June 30th? Dr. Boo, would you like to uh, respond to that question? Sure. Um... Well, the state has not given us any um, um, requirements for, for for moving into stage three. And in fact, the state is now talking as if everyone's in stage three, sort of, now that hair salons are being allowed to open. Um, but, um, you know, when, when, when I did the attestation for the variants to allow us to uh, get into stage two, um, I, I told the state, and it's publicly posted on their website and, and ours, um, all the things that we would monitor to, um, to make sure that disease transmission is controlled. And, and we need to do that. We need to, uh, we've made a lot of changes recently. We've opened, very recently, we've opened up retail, we're opening up churches, we're opening up hair salons, we're opening up some camping, um, restaurants have, have on-premise dining all within the last couple of weeks or, or in, the, in the next couple of days. And it is essential, as Dr. Burroughs was alluding to, that we now stop, take a deep breath, show some resolve and, and monitor to see that disease is stable. If disease is stable for a period of time, in my opinion, the minimum would be three weeks of monitoring with no additional changes then it might be appropriate to consider making additional changes, additional modifications, um, moving further into stage three. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Uh, Frank, you Frank, want to- Frank, can I add something on that? Oh, sure. So the way we're gonna to get to stage three is if everybody plays along and does what they're supposed to do. If you want this to work, don't be a jerk. Robin and I came up with that earlier this week. When you go to a business, wear a mask, whether they want you to or not, you need to do it. Whether you want to or not, you need to do it. Play by the rules. If everybody does what they're supposed to do and plays along, does what the rules say, then we will get there faster. But if you're not going to abide by the rules and you're going to go rogue, you're going to have a party, you're going to insist upon not wearing a mask in a business, we're not going to get there. So if you want this to work, don't be a jerk. Thank you, Sheriff Braun. Uh, Chief Rebold, you wanted to add to the conversation? Well, not as eloquently as, as <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, the other item for us on the stage two, stage three question, um, it is confusing. If you're confused, it probably means you understand it. What happened is that the, the, the governor plucked a couple of items that are stage three activities, plucked them out and put them in the current stage two so we that, that's the part that's confusing we're not into the to the uh question that was asked um we don't have a a, a, a date for stage three we do have as dr boo said we have the requirements of what we're doing to monitor and and public health as brian well knows he's knee deep in it um we're doing those activities um now but we don't have a, a date or a set of conditions yet that the state has given us, but it is confusing because a couple of key items were pulled out of stage three and dropped into stage two. So that while that's probably generally welcomed, um, we're, we're not in stage three yet. We don't have a date for it. Thank you, Chief. Lauren, do we have any uh, live questions? 
We do. Our first caller is Greg Bach. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Greg. Hi, guys. Um, you know, I watched the, uh, the meeting on Tuesday of the Board of Supervisors, and um, this is maybe a personal opinion. I could be wrong, but that, that's not going to change my question for Dr. Vu. I think the Board of Supervisors is very close to voting in favor of opening up short-term lodging. Uh, I, I'm fairly sure that two of the supervisors have made a public stand that uh, they would like to do that. And if one more supervisor agrees with them, I suppose that's the majority. So I'm gonna put Dr. Boo on the spot here and uh, ask you if the supervisors vote to open up short-term lodging Will you support that? Go ahead, Dr. Boo. Greg, my, my preference would be to convince the supervisors ahead of time that now is not the time to do that. If they make that decision, you ask me if I would support it, I would disagree with it. All right, well, thank you, Dr. Boo. Uh, Frank, you wanna to add to that? Uh, yes, and Greg, I know you didn't ask me, but I'm going to answer anyway. Um, I would also not support that uh, from a management perspective. I think it puts us, puts our citizens uh, in an undue level of exposure to the, you know, based on the reasons that, that Dr. Burrow had mentioned. Um, I know that's not popular. Uh, I know that's not uh, what a lot of people want to hear. Uh, but we have a responsibility to all the people here, not just the ones that are wanting to push it one direction, we get, uh, I get personal calls, get stopped in bonds through our masks. There are people that are very supportive of not going too fast. They're typically people that are more at risk. Um, you know, if you listen to some of the conversations during our Spanish speaking sessions, um, different types of questions, the workers are concerned, the family members are concerned. And so I, I've got a responsibility to all of the people in the community and their public safety, not just the ones that are pushing in one direction. So we have to listen to all of those. But if I were asked um, to support that right now, to open it up, um, I, in addition to Dr. Boo, I, I could not say that that was a good idea, it would not be prudent. Can I, this is Tom again, thank you, thank you, Chief. Um, I, I, let, let me also add some things that I'm, uh, a little bit concerned about. I mean, you know, clearly, as Dr. Burroughs has said, and others have, have uh, implied, this, um, this pandemic threat has not gone away. You know, as of yesterday, renowned medical center where, where Mammoth Hospital and Northern Inyo Hospital and Bishop send all their critically ill patients, they were on red status for accepting transfers because they had so many people with COVID-19. They could not take more people with COVID-19 in their, in their ward. They, they take patients from a large geographical area all over rural Nevada and um, parts of rural California, but um, um, there is significant disease transmission out there. This week we had, our, we, we had a case in Northern Mono County, which we're still investigating, but it may, re, it may represent our first evidence of, of community transmission in Northern Mono County. I will say I'm particularly worried about, about the risk of, of Northern Mono County because there does seem to be a, a, a greater um, denial of the risk of the threat of the, of the, of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic that, uh, you know, I understand that uh, the um, mask, facial coverings, mask wearing is, is uh, not common, not popular there, yet people are coming. There's a lot of pressure to open up. <laughs> And I, I'm just not sure, I don't think those two things go together well. Um, you know, um, the idea with asking people to keep distance, to practice hygiene, to cover your face, is to allow us to open up safely so we can go back to work. And you know, if, you, if you open up and don't practice, um, don't take precautions, it's, it's just not gonna go well. Thank you, Dr. Boo. I believe Dr. Burroughs would also like to add on. Yeah, I'd like to just say from the perspective of someone that works in the hospital taking care of patients, um, we have a plan in place to be able to accommodate or take care of a surge of patients. So 
normally our hospital can take care of generally about 15 inpatients and we've increased our plan to be able to take care of 40, which just because we have the plan in place doesn't mean that I or anyone that works at the hospital ever wants to see that. So please believe me when I tell you, I do not want to take care of 40 patients in the hospital. We have a plan in place to be able to do it, but that's not safe and it's not what anybody wants. Um, as Sheriff Braun said, and everyone else is saying here, I think it's way more important to make sure that everyone stays safe and that we avoid the issue that we're all definitely afraid of. Our former CEO, Gary Myers at the hospital always used to say, I'd rather be dressed up with no place to go. So let me wear my tuxedo and have no place to go. Don't make me go out to the dance. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Can we get our next caller? Ryan. Oh, go ahead, Bob. Thank you. I just wanted to, if I could, to, to make a couple of contextual observations. Doctors Burroughs and Boo and Chief Freeval are providing or they're expressing their best professional advice, their recommendations. Um, and they come from the old saying, where you stand depends on where you sit. If you represent the medical community, if you represent the emergency response community or the emergency operations center, those are going to be um, calm, clear, logical recommendations based on uh, data um, and facts. And they are part of the information stream that gets received and contemplated by the Board of Supervisors. And in my capacity, in the county administrator's office, I also provide my best professional advice. And the, 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 um, the step beyond that is once a policy is adopted by the Board of Supervisors, based on whatever it wishes to consider, it becomes administration's responsibility to carry that out in the most efficient and effective manner possible and whatever decision, whatever policy decision the board makes going forward, um, it's going to be my responsibility to make sure that it gets carried out, and it will. It's not going to be diverted, sidetracked, or, or undercut um, by me substituting my judgment for the action of the board. You know, that said, everything that Dr. Boo um, Dr. Burroughs and Chief Freeval have offered um, reflects my own experience and everything that we have seen, not just in our jurisdiction, but in similar jurisdictions around the state and country. But um, the board, the, we propose, the board disposes, and implementation falls to administration. Thank you. Thank you, CAO Lawton. Uh, before our next caller, I just want to take a moment to announce um, our schedule change. Uh, we will be moving to having our meetings every two weeks now, and that'll be in English and Spanish. So our next meeting, community meeting, will be June 11th, and then the one after that will be June 25th. Thank you. And Lauren, can we have our next caller? Lauren, are you there? Did we lose Lauren? Lauren, are you back now? Ryan, I can jump in. This is Justin. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> This question is regarding housekeepers. You stated that housekeepers shouldn't be exposed to risk by cleaning vacation rentals in Mammoth Lakes. Would you agree that you are exposing these housekeepers to terrible economic hardship by prohibiting them from doing their jobs? Who is cleaning the public facilities in Mammoth Lakes and, that have been open? Um, why can personnel clean these hourly, but housekeepers cannot clean individual rental units that have been used by only a handful of people? Dan, would you like to field that question for us? Thank you. Uh, I think there's a, a couple of 
reasons that uh, housekeepers are not uh, cleaning the various lodging properties. One being just the structure of the state order of having that as a non-essential uh, worker. And so by doing so, they're, they're required not to be in doing that work. Uh, and secondly, one of the areas of concern and the disease and the spread of that is from those types of activities where you have a lot of different people coming in and out of a facility. Uh, we don't know the level of care uh, that people take within it, the timing and uh, exposing people into those environments can be uh, risky uh, to the uh, house cleaners and the, the keepers who are doing that work. The other cleaning work that's being done, some of that is by uh, regular staff members, others by contract staff accordingly. Uh, there is uh, protocols in place to maintain uh, cleanliness and activities within those facilities to help reduce that risk. There is a number of requirements uh, put in place there. We definitely understand the economic challenges and the impacts there. Uh, both the federal government, state government, and locally, we've uh, really tried to step up and say, how do we help in those areas be with uh, base unemployment, expanded unemployment, and with the town's rental assistance program. So we've done a lot of things to try to help and also should one of those uh, workers end up ill as noted, uh, depending on the depth and uh, impact of that illness, not only could it impact that single person, but a whole family or beyond. And the economic impact of that could be uh, tragic, even greater than what uh, the loss of the economic income currently is. Thank you, Dan. And we have just under 15 minutes left in our meeting. Um, I just wanna remind anyone whose question we don't get to that they can submit the question on the portal, the COVID-19 portal, um, Mono Health, visit monohealth.com forward slash coronavirus. Um, and you can also check out the FAQ page where your question might be answered. Can we have our next question? I'm back. Brian? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, Brian. Brian. You know, I, I've heard um, a lot of um, lodging operators um, you know, talk about how clean they're, they're um, you know, what precautions they're taking. And, and the last um, caller, questioner, um, you know, referred to, uh, implied that, that, that we are keeping lodging closed because of risk to the workers. But it's really the travel that, it, you know, from, from, from an epidemiological public health epidemic pandemic point of view, it is the, the human travel, the tourism, the unnecessary non-essential travel that is the, the big threat here. Uh, you know, that's, that's why COVID-19, that's how COVID-19 spread with incredible speed all around the world because people are moving all the time. Uh, that's why it arrived early in, in Mammoth Lakes and, and uh, we had a number of cases uh, very early on because of tourism. I don't know if they were skiers at the mountain. I always guessed that was probably the case. And, and, and that's why the, the state, the, you know, the, the public health authorities around the world are being very careful with travel and tourism and, and, and asking us to stick to essential activities. And um, it's super unfortunate that we have a tourism dependent economy. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for it to be in a worse situation during a pandemic, but that is our um, situation. And, and uh, you know, maybe going forward, uh, some economic diversification would be in the, it would be in, in the interests of, of the Eastern Sierra. Thank you, Dr. Boo. I believe uh, Dr. Burroughs would like to add to this conversation. Go ahead, Dr. Burroughs. I was gonna say, I couldn't agree more with what Dr. Boo just said. I'm not really worried about the people cleaning those units. I'm much more concerned about the people coming in from the area and staying in those units. So he is absolutely correct. It's, it's not a concern for the workers. It's a, it's a concern for the number of people coming in and out and just more, more traffic that we're seeing in our community as a result of that. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Chief Rebolt. Yeah, just a, a quick add to that. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the frustration uh, with this question and some other ones, they're, they're spot on because when you look at it from, from that individual activity, you go, wait a minute, I, this, is, this can be mitigated very easily. And, and they're correct. Um, it's like we're having some of the discussion on, 
on you know fishing opener. Nobody wants to stand next to each other while they're while they're fishing. Uh, these are all indirect measures that really are about slowing down the rate of people moving. And that I guess the the you know economic review or economic recovery branch the other day we talked about it and, and you know the panelists said it best. They said, look, the this reopening that we've done up to this point, you know, that's nice. It gave us something, but it's not sustainable economically. We get that. We totally get that. What we also know, though, is as we're watching, just even like the Caltrans travel figures, you know, they skyrocketed up last week when there were just very little changes in the stages. There were a few. But the virus has no hands or feet or legs. It moves through us. And, and so on, on a broad scale, when we start moving as people, as a population in large amounts, that's how we get this spread. So, so please understand your individual questions are brilliant. They're spot on. You're accurate. That, that, that narrow focus you're looking at, it can be mitigated. But as Dr. Burroughs and Dr. Boo have said, it's about turning on the mass transit of people. And we know that the economic activity that we need to survive as a tourism economy only happens if we have massive amounts of people that come through. And uh, the last thing I'd point to is, you know, when you look at, at case activity in the state, um, while it is gross data, the, the numbers are the hugest in Southern California and it is our drive market. So there's no mystery about what's coming here when we invite it so that's why we're just trying to be extra careful not stay this way forever we cannot we know it's we've got to return but we're just trying to you've all done such a great job we are so close to landing this thing properly we just we just don't want to land badly right at the end thank you chief lauren can we have our next question in regards to the surge whether you open or now or not until there is a vaccine, the situation will not change. Herd immunity is also far away and not even proven. So what is the delay in reopening really accomplishing at this time? Dr. Sure, I'll take that. I'll, okay. I'll take okay. that. Okay. Yeah, um, so, so the idea is, to, yeah, um, Craig, you can, you can um, um, jump sure. in after, um, but, 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 but the idea is to, is to uh, prevent a big surge. We, we feel that we can manage uh, moderate amounts of, of increased disease activity, but we don't want the big spike. I mean, we, we can handle, you know, um, you know, cases, clusters, little outbreaks here and there, you know, we'll, you know, we'll jump on top of them intensively with, you know, with, with, with contact tracing, the hospital can take care of, you know, moderate numbers of, 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 of people um, who, are, who are sick, even severely so, but it, it's, it's when you get too many too fast, that's when it's really bad for, for, for the health of our community. And, and of course, um, it would be you know, equally disastrous or more disastrous for the economy uh, you know, of the community as well. Go ahead, Dr. Burns. The answer really, this is what we talked about, gosh, it seems like a lifetime ago, I, and I realized that. But we actually posted this and we talked about it. So if you look at a model of a population where everybody can move around and do whatever they want, no restrictions, no limitations, no distancing, whatever you want to do, you're going to get wildfire. And that's what we want to avoid. If you limit it to one out of every four people can move around, that's when you start to see this whole idea of flattening the curve. And I know it's been a while since we've talked about the whole idea of flatten the curve or crush the curve, but that's what we were looking at. And then if you move to one out of eight people moving around freely and doing what they need to do, but with all the precautions of wearing a mask and hand sanitizer and distancing, that's when we got back to the idea of crushing the curve and making it flat and not having this big problem. So this idea, well, what's the difference gonna be? The difference is gonna be, you're gonna go back to huge spike and big problem. And despite the fact that everybody feels like we have avoided the bullet, we have avoided the bullet. The problem is that the, uh, the war's not over yet. And if we let our guard down, we're going to see that big surge that we have been desperately trying to avoid for the last almost three months now. Um, we are so close to winning this thing and moving in a direction that lets everything open and allows us to function and have our businesses be open and live in our new normal. And what I'm really concerned about, and I think a lot of people on this panel are concerned about, is somehow... The alarm is going to sound and everyone's going to feel like crisis averted, let's move on. 
this is not crisis averted. This is, this is our normal probably for the next year plus of how we function, how we survive, how we act, how we behave, the rules we have to follow. This is, this is not a, a government ordinance that says you have to do this. We are all, I, I can't say this enough, we are all in this together. If one of us fails, all of us fail. And I got to tell you, that is a, a recipe for a huge disaster, health-wise, economic-wise, and every other way you can think about it. If we keep moving forward in the right direction, and we're all in this, and you see all the commercials, in this together. If we're in this together, we will get through it. We will be in a point where we can function, and we can learn to adapt. But we have to adapt. We can't just shut our eyes and say, it's over move on, open the campgrounds, open short-term housing. Everything is fine, let's just keep going. That is gonna invite this back in, into our community and then we're really gonna have a problem where we're gonna be shut down. Thank you, doctors. Looking at the clock, it looks like we have time for one more question. Lauren, do we have one more live caller? We do. Ivana, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi there. Um, first and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for everything they're doing. Um, I know there is a lot of negativity coming from inability to open up short-term rentals, but what the town's doing is in the best effort to protect people. And um, I realize that, and I hope um, everybody else at one point in life will. My concern and question comes in from the... Um, junction where short-term rentals um, will be able to open and what is the procedure that's going to be put in place not only for the linen companies but for us owners of these second homes to assure further safety i personally don't feel comfortable renting my home because my family frequently visits mammoth for our own travel we haven't been to mammoth since march 12th but once we're able to come back and once we're able to allow guests to come back how do we stay safe? Do we need to spread out reservations two days apart? Do we need to remove certain things from the property? And how do we control and verify that the linen company is doing the same on our behalf? So I'm gonna ask Chief Rebolt to uh, start this discussion. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, um, uh, excellent question by the caller. <clears throat> so we have, if you've not been on, um, the website um, uh, under the, uh, uh, the business tab and uh, uh, the, the sections for the different um, business sectors, we do have we, guidelines that, that people can review for law, even though we don't have that part open yet as a way to um, help you get prepared as you go. Um, as, it is, as it sits right now, we uh, have a set of procedures out there that can be um, used in the, in the in the cleaning process, both by the workers themselves. And then um, in that area is a link to EPA um, approved, approved disinfectants. Um, it's pretty easy to use, uh, the one that we put on, there's several and some of them are cumbersome, but that one's actually pretty easy to use. So whatever the, whatever the product, you could ask your cleaning uh, company, uh, describe to me what you're using for uh, materials and you can ask them. There's a, there has to be an EPA registration number on that. And you can self-verify on that list if it meets that COVID-19 um, approved list uh, against that particular virus. Um, so that's that's one way that you could you know you could do that. And then in terms of you know how to protect your your family and your house, um, really the same guidelines that we have for the cleaning um, of the lodging is the, is the same. The, you know, whether it's a, a room that's shared, you know, commercial in a large building or or in a second home or an Airbnb are going to be um, fairly similar. But if you're really concerned is about the, the laundry service, you can drill down and ask uh, that question. But, but, just, but just, to, just to directly address the, uh, the question about um, waiting between guests, um, that, that is a recommendation. Um, you know, um, you, you see different things and nobody has the right, the, uh, different time intervals and, and, and nobody has quite the, right amount of evidence for, for a, a, a super satisfying 
answer, but but 24 to 70, 72 hours between guests is, is recommended to uh, to decrease the risk of transmission along with uh, really diligent, uh, you know, cleaning and a lot of other efforts to, uh, you know, just uh, um, reduce to reduce risk. So, so um, we, we spent a lot of time on, on some uh, on, on the guidelines for uh, for for lodging. Um, you know, looked at uh, CDPH and CDC and 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 some some industry uh, guidelines and uh, you know tried to come up with some things that made sense. So so uh, invite encourage you to uh, take a look at that. Chief Rebold, I believe you have an add on for that. Yeah, again, I'm I'm sorry. I just want to. I know we're at the end here. Um, to the to the last caller's question, and actually to all of our lodging and our retail businesses, our entire business sector. We're built around supporting tourism. Um, I think Dr. Burroughs has said this a number of times. Um, you know, this this COVID virus is the enemy. It's 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 not actually us. It feels like us because we're we're what's in between um, yourself and what's normal. Um, here's the here's the the idea I just want to put out there. We've mentioned it a number of times is that uh, for for us to have a thriving tourism economy in this day and age. Um, your MLT, uh, Mandalay Lakes Tourism, did a great survey out there with people about their primary concerns about picking a place to go take their first trip for tourism. Um, about 80%, a little over 80% of their concerns rested in two things. One was a resurgence of COVID-19 in the area that you're going to go to, a topic we've covered a couple times here tonight. And the second one was the cleanliness of the place that they were going to go stay. And I would just ask you, when we're having these discussions, imagine if your potential tourists who are going to come to your business were listening to our discussion. You know, do they, do they hear maybe a race to get open and a little less concern about their top two concerns? And I didn't make those up. Those are, those are the survey results. So you're not really doing this to convince Dr. Boo or myself or any of the other managers for this. In terms of winning the tourism dollar in this day and age, you've got to let them have a reason to believe that we're not going to have a resurgence and that their experience is going to be a clean one. That's really what the competition is going to be about. I appreciate your patience and, um, and I appreciate you spending the time with us tonight. And uh, yeah, you certainly know how to contact the EOC and call me. I get no shortage of inquiries. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. And I'd like to thank all of our panelists that were here tonight and our viewers at home. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. So until June 11th, take care of yourselves and each other. Good night, Mono County.